Dr. Perry Peacock here with Wilderness Innovation. <clears throat> I want to give a few tips on using our personal survival blankets. Uh, and a big shout out, huge, huge thanks to all of our customers. We have, we have sold way more blankets in the last, uh, the last few months than we've ever sold. It's insane. It's crazy. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for buying our blankets. And uh, so many people are enjoying them and loving them. These blankets are good to use as a supplement to something else you've already got, or you can use them standalone. Uh, you can combine multiple blankets together uh, to add even more comfort. So all kinds of things you can do. Blankets are really flexible. But I want to show you some things today uh, that will help out. Particularly, let's say you're a person who, like myself, uh, tends to get cold feet easily out camping. So let me show you a way you can help alleviate that with the blanket. But uh, <clears throat> let me pull the blanket out of here. Uh, this one is uh, this one's made out of it's um, this is a large PSBL and. Um, it's uh, coyote on one side and it's real tree extra on the other. We have quite a few color options that you can choose from. So one thing to note is that every blanket comes with two of these shock cords. And those shock cords were primarily intended to, when you want to use this blanket as a wrap, to wrap around you to make kind of a cocoon if you're using one of our ponchos as a hammock. So they stretch, shock cord, got a cord lock on the end right there. And uh, so you can so you can put it around there. Well I'll show you how we do it. Anyway, so I just keep those in my in my bag. And uh, let me let me set this thing up and show you how we can help keep our feet warm when we're camping. Okay, so first of all, when your feet, your feet usually, especially if your feet tend to get cold, they need more insulation than the rest of your body. <coughs> so here's a quick way to do it, to give more uh, insulation in your foot than anywhere else. Just take your blanket, you fold it in half like normal. Well, you can fold, a lot of times I fold mine in thirds and have one layer under me, two over, or one under me, two over. So you can do that. But anyway, so what we want to do is fold it in half again. And then fold <coughs> that up over there. Okay, so now I just doubled the amount of insulation for my feet. Now, during the night, you don't want that to all come apart on you. So take one of these shock cords right here and go right at the, right at the bottom, just... Uh, just a few inches up, about a hand span up, I say, from from the bottom of the blanket. Zip that up there. Okay. And then you can re-maneuver it or whatever. So this does two things. This keeps the keeps me from sliding out the bottom, and it also helps to keep uh, keeps this thing folded down here. So I maintain these these uh, two layers under me, two layers, well I got two layers all around me now when I do this down in my foot area up to about my knees. So that right there make a huge difference in, uh, in helping to keep your feet warm. So even, I mean just, just doing this on the bottom so your feet don't slide out, that can make a huge difference by itself because that's one thing in a blanket sometimes you wind up your feet wind up coming out the bottom if you're not careful and then they get cold. So even, even if you don't fold it over like this, just uh, using those, cord, those shock cords that come with your blanket can help keep your feet warm just by keeping it closed off. But doing like this, we double our insulation around our feet. So that's huge right there, that's huge. Big deal. Okay, now here's another thing right here. So I've got my feet in here, double layer of insulation around my feet, 
and up here up into here even now up here on my chest and this depends on how big a person you are <laughs> uh, if you're a smaller person you can actually layer over a little more than a larger person could but even myself so right now I have one layer under me two layers over me a lot of times that makes a big difference in in your comfort level uh, especially you see there are quite a few dry leaves around here so I could easily I could pretty easily get myself a layer about a foot thick of leaves underneath me so I wouldn't need as much underneath me as on top of me and I actually I even feel fairly warm under me right now with just what little leaves there are there so that makes a makes a huge difference right there a big difference and uh, and so that's one way you can add a great deal to your comfort level is by putting two layers over you and having the one layer underneath you being all the way inside the blanket that makes a tremendous difference in your warmth and your comfort level so so here's the uh, here's what everybody kind of wonders about is thinking that all the way inside here you're breathing inside here you're going to get everything wet and clammy well that doesn't happen in here because every single thing in this blanket is very breathable and it everything wants to pass the moisture on out you're more humid inside the blanket than the air is outside and just by nature it wants to pull that moisture out of there we have nothing here to prevent that from happening and so it does let's say you're kind of bundled up except for your face uh, here and you're breathing that cold air but what you're doing is you're sucking cold air into your warm body you're humidifying the air you're warming the air up so the air doesn't cold air doesn't damage your lungs then you're turning right back around after you've done all that and you're breathing the warmed moist air back out into the cold so what you're doing consistently all night long is you're trying to warm up the outside while the outside's trying to uh, chill your body off so you're, you're you're fighting kind of a losing battle I don't have any scientific proof or anything, but just from my own experience, I know that um, I I know that I get uh, 15 degrees or more of benefit by being all the way inside the blanket. So when you add that to to whatever other factors, you know that makes a, that makes quite a difference in how comfortable a person can be outside in in the in the environment. All right, so some other some other things to keep in mind with uh, using the blankets. So remember, the blankets are very breathable, so you don't have to worry about being inside of them. Now, there's two things. Uh, sometimes, because of wind or some kind of storm, you may want to take one of our ponchos or tarps and put it over top of the blanket to keep. Uh, either the wind out or keep the elements from raining down or snowing down on you or whatever so if you want to do that why that's fine but there's two things to remember one thing is if the temperature if the temperature is below the freezing point you can lay a poncho or a tarp directly on top of the blanket and it'll be just fine so what will happen with the moisture from your body is as it works its way up through the blanket it will hit that tarp or poncho which is waterproof and which is also cold because below freezing well that moisture will freeze to the tarp or poncho when you get up in the morning you just shake or brush it off and the moisture is gone the moisture is passed all the way through the blanket not a problem now if the temperature is above freezing then in that case you don't want the tarp or the poncho whatever you're using as your canopy or cover you don't want that touching the blanket it's not going to hurt it but 
the moisture because it's above freezing it will go hit that punch or tarp and it'll just collect there and it'll be sitting on the surface of the blanket and on the surface of your tarp or poncho so that'll create a wet layer eh, it's not necessarily terrible but it's better if you can get your poncho or tarp a little bit above it so you have a little ventilation and that way the moisture can kind of dissipate into the atmosphere instead of collecting uh, on there. Well now even if this thing does get wet uh, kind of damp on the surface you can lay it on the bush when you get up in the morning lay it over a tree or something like that and uh, the sun you know a little bit of sun or even a little breeze or whatever it'll soon dry it all out and so it's not a huge deal anyway but it's better to avoid that so I give you that little suggestion. All right, now let me give you another tip. Now, you know, I told you right at the beginning here that this ground around here is not something I would really worry about laying right on the surface of without any kind of ground cloth or anything like that under me using this blanket. Now, how do you know whether you got too much moisture or not enough? Okay, well, there's a couple things. Number one, don't ever lay where the water is puddling up or going to puddle up. I learned that the hard way about 10 years ago. <laughs> As it was rain, kind of combination rain, snow coming down on me. And in the dark, I shifted my location a little, not realizing that I was actually in an area that was a slight depression. So as water collected and ran in there, I soon found I was actually laying in water. So obviously you want to avoid that. Don't do what I did. Uh, I've learned most everything I've learned by experience, by the way. <laughs> uh, now, so, so how damp can the ground be? Well, this ground is, this ground is fairly damp here if I, let's see if I, if I get the camera up here close and we kind of shift the leaves out of the way here. Uh, you now you'll see that ground is, it's, it's damp, you know, but here's the thing, I cannot, I can't squeeze, no matter how hard I try, I can't squeeze any water out of what's there. So yeah, it is a little damp, but there's there's no saturation there. So I'm not I could lay right on there. I'm not really going to pick up anything off of this. But in any, but in any event, I would always say, you know, just because the blanket can possibly handle it doesn't mean you should always do it. <laughs> Even I do because I'm testing stuff, but but you know, hey, any time like around here like I say, there's plenty of leaves that are laying on the surface that have been dried out by the sun and the wind. I mean, you could easily in 10 minutes scrape a, scrape a nice leaf mattress to lay on and then lay your blanket on top of that. Then you don't even have to worry about it. Plus, the dry leaves will add some thermal uh, insulation underneath you, so they'll enhance the, the use of the blanket. Now here's one more thing to consider with the blanket, and that is uh, everybody thinks you need to use a, uh, a ground cloth or something under it. I, I rarely, I rarely, rarely ever use anything underneath my blanket. Here's the deal. Uh, if you use a tarp or something underneath your blanket and it gets like this blanket, I've slept in the blanket in the in a light rain without anything over it, and I've been fine. Um, but I wasn't. If I had a ground cloth under me, any water that runs or whatever is going to collect underneath the blanket into the tarp or the ground cloth. So then you've turned your ground cloth into a bathtub. So now you're guaranteed to get wet underneath. So usually. If you can be on the ground, if it's loose ground, um, typically any moisture that comes is going to drain right out into the ground. Now, what do you do if it's 
a little more moist than that and you just don't have any alternative well pile up leaves like this or or you could lay some sticks on the ground crisscross them a little bit to give you a little bit of distance off the ground then throw a bunch of leaves on top of that or something uh, just to cushion the cushion the, the feel of the branches or whatever and then anything that happens to come down is going to just drain off drain through everything drain down to the ground and soak in or run off so I very rarely use a ground cloth I mean you're free to do it just remember the caveat that a ground cloth can become a swimming pool if it if you have a situation arise where it can collect water so that's something to think about there. Now another thing to think about is uh, some people will ask about well, what about um, what about what what clothing like I'm often wearing my clothing in my blanket. Many many times I'm doing that just because quite often I'm testing things every time I'm out camping. I'm, trying something out so oftentimes I've got to get up and down or in and out a time or two or three maybe in the night if I'm checking something or whatever so for me it's a convenience by not having to keep putting my clothes on and taking them off now now that said what's the best clothing to wear if you're wearing clothing and you're gonna wear it inside the system well ideally you want to be wearing clothing that's similar to the system like I've got Levi's on here and those are 100% cotton those would not be necessarily advisable because they can retain moisture and once they get wet and damp and so that sort of thing it's hard to dry them out so I I'm not I, I'm hardly ever wearing any Levi's when I'm camping I'm usually wearing uh, 60 40 cloth or something 60% polyester 40% cotton or or a poly cut or a poly nylon or something like that so I've got a good bit of synthetic fabric all those work pretty well inside of here and even if they get damp I've found that if I have my like my uh, my regular pants that you see me wearing when I'm out camping even if they get wet I can get in here with them wet they will actually dry through the system because that moisture will be driven off by my body heat it'll be driven right through the blanket I've actually gone to bed with with uh, wet or damp pants and have them be virtually well they're dry in the morning you can't squeeze anything out you can't see anything I mean they're virtually dry so that is always a nice thing now another thing to think about uh, clothing wise also is I've found actually which I seldom do this because of the nature of what I'm doing all the time but I've found that you're actually you're actually warmer inside here if you take your clothing off if you get your skin right next to the blanket it's actually warmer than wearing clothing because the the blanket has better insulating value than most of your clothing does so if you're wearing some clothing you're wearing something that has less insulation than the blanket so you're kind of you know set <laughs> kind of self-defeating in a sort of you know so often I'll take my clothing off and just lay it inside the blanket next to me or whatever and and uh, but uh, but I found one time when I got absolutely soaking wet that uh, I got in the blanket and just stripped stripped right down naked inside the blanket and I was so, so much warmer when I did that. Okay, so besides the fact that I could wrap around me and sit on a rock or sit under a tree or whatever, I can also I can also put the blanket all the way around me like this and I can even walk around one time I got stranded out and I was unprepared and I didn't have all the, the right clothing did around me even over my head I took a parachute cord and tied around my waist or kind of underneath my arms 
<clears throat> so it'd kind of help hold it in place. And I walked for like two miles like that. So one of the nice things about the blanket is it can turn into a coat or whatever. I mean, you, you can use it however you need to use it, you know. If you need to sit out like this or whatever, and uh, you know, you got to keep an eye out or be a lookout or whatever, or you're just watching for th something or whatever, you got to sit out for a little bit, wrap the blanket around you, let it help you keep you warm. It'll really do the trick. It's amazing. And uh, it's one of the things I like about our survival blankets is they're very, very, very versatile. You're not taking something with you that you only use to sleep in at night. You can use it, you know, at other times. You can use it in other ways. So take some gear with you that's multi-purpose. In all my years of, of using this type of system, this kind of product, and that's since about the mid-1980s, so it's been quite a while, I've never really, uh, I've never found anything that I, that I, uh, that I think handles moisture better than this blanket does. And so even though you may have other things that you use from time to time, the blanket could always be a mainstay with you as a, as a means to handle tough, tough situations. When you're dealing with some more serious moisture type problems, the blanket can uh, handle those with ease, typically. So it makes it a nice, it makes it a nice thing. And uh, it's a comfortable deal to have with you. So I hope this little video has helped. Uh, hope it's helped you to uh, get some ideas. And uh, if you've already got a blanket from us and uh, some more ways you can use it, uh, if, we're, uh, if you've ordered a blanket and we're in the process of making one for you, which we've got, we have so many orders, it's insane. <laughs> so we're busy, busy, busy making stuff. And uh, anyway, uh, you know, when you get your blanket, you can, uh, you'll be have, you, with this video, you have some more ideas to try it with and uh, try it out and see what you think. And uh, I'm sure you'll like it. It's a very, very nice product. And uh, I love it, man. I'm telling you, I really love the blankets. So take care, be safe. Have a good time in the outdoors. Enjoy it, man. It's great.